Hey, do you know this constellation? It's Ursa Major. How about this asterism? It's the Big Dipper. Today we're going to learn the difference between constellations and asterisms. We're also going to learn why some stars are brighter than others, how scientists rate the brightness of a star, and we're going to learn how long a light year is. Let's look at the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is a grouping of stars within the constellation called Ursa Major. Ursa Major means Great Bear or Big Bear. To understand the Big Dipper and Ursa Major, you need to know the difference between a constellation and an asterism. Constellations are official groupings of stars that make up a shape in the night sky. And what's, set, what's interesting about constellations is that they are recognized by scientists. Now, that's different from an asterism. Asterisms are patterns of, of stars that you can see in the night sky, but they're not scientifically recognized. So a constellation is scientifically recognized and it's an official area of the night sky, but an asterism is just a grouping of stars that a lot of people know about, but it's not really official. The Big Dipper is an asterism, not official. Ursa Major is a constellation, official. Some other constellations are Orion, Scorpius, Canis Major. And then some asterisms are Orion's Belt, Orion's Sword, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper. You can see the asterisms sometimes consists of stars within constellations. So we said before that the Big Dipper is an asterism existing within the constellation Ursa Major, and the Big Dipper is made up of seven bright stars. You probably also know about the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper is an asterism within the constellation Ursa Minor, which means small bear. Now, let's talk about star magnitude. Look at the Big Dipper. Six of the stars in the Big Dipper have a magnitude of about positive two. One of them, Magrez, has a magnitude of positive three. Look at this picture and find Magrez, kind of in the middle. What do you notice about Magrez in comparison with the other stars? It's dimmer, right? It's not as bright. Astronomers define star brightness in terms of magnitude, how bright the star appears from the Earth. How do star magnitudes work? The brightness of the star is assigned a number. Dimmer stars are positive numbers, brighter stars are negative numbers. Basically the lower a number is, the brighter it is, and the higher a number is, the dimmer it is. So negative numbers, those are very low numbers, those are brighter stars, and positive numbers are dimmer stars. That's why in our picture of the Big Dipper, the other stars with a magnitude of positive two are brighter than Magrez because Magrez has a positive three magnitude. Do you get it? Do you get it? Let's move on to the Little Dipper. Polaris, often known as the North Star, is the tip of the handle of the Little Dipper. This makes it useful in navigation. For centuries, Ship navigators has you, have used Polaris as a guide to sail the seas at night. Polaris is a yellow-white, supergiant star. It's a type of star that appears to pulsate or flicker. Polaris, at its brightest, has a magnitude of negative 3.6. In comparison, the faintest star visible in the night sky has a magnitude of positive six. Okay, we talked about star magnitude. Now let's get into light years. A light year is a unit of length used by astronomers equal to the distance that light travels in one year. A light year is about 5.88 trillion miles. Let's take one of the stars from the Big Dipper. Alkiad is 210 light years away from Earth. If you multiply 210 by 5.88 trillion, you'll see that Alkiad is 1.2 quadrillion miles away. 
Alaris, the North Star, is about 433 light years away. So how many quadrillion miles is that? Polaris is 2.5 quadrillion miles away from Earth. Remember, Polaris is a super giant star. So even though it's far away, the size of it makes it so that we can see it super bright in the night sky. Let's take one more look at the Big Dipper. To see what the Big Dipper would look like from outer space, we're gonna do an activity. For our model of the Big Dipper, we're gonna be very scientific about it because we're going to take the amount of light years each star is from Earth and scale that down to inches. And then we're gonna represent those light years in inches with the string on our model. The closer the star is to Earth, the longer our string will be. Okay, here's a chart you're gonna need. You might have to come back to this chart and pause it while you're working on the activity later, but you can do that later. Just remember, it's right here in the video. Come back to it when you need it. You're also gonna want this Big Dipper map, but there is a link to this map in the assignment. All right, here's some stuff you can use to make your model. You're gonna want a piece of cardboard that's big enough to fit a sheet of paper inside of. I'm just using the top of a shoe box here. Uh, you could also just print your thing on cardstock and it'll be thick enough to use. You're gonna need your Big Dipper map. I don't have a printer, so you could see that I just sort of penciled in where each one goes, and I tried to make it as close as I can to the map that I gave you a link to. You're gonna need something to poke a hole with, some scissors. You're gonna need some kind of string. You could use floss, you could use black yarn, you could use regular string, some tape, a ruler, and aluminum foil. Start by taping or gluing your Big Dipper map onto your cardboard. And uh, if you want, you can color it in black so it looks like the night sky. But if you do color it in black, try not to color over the names of the stars. Keep those available because you're gonna need those. <laughs> right now that you have it attached to your cardboard, you're gonna poke holes where the um, circles are. So use your, your thing that you're gonna use to poke holes. You could use a pencil or uh, maybe a toothpick depending on how strong your cardboard is. I'm gonna use this barbecue skewer and uh, you might want to get somebody to do this for you. It can be a little bit dangerous. So if you want to get an adult to do it for you, definitely go ahead and do that. Okay, you can see I poked a hole through all of my circles there next to the star names. Now it's time to cut your string. You have seven stars, so you're gonna need seven pieces of string. And each piece of string should be at least two feet long. It's okay if it's longer than that, but no shorter than two feet. Cut it. Seven pieces of string. Okay, next thing you wanna do is get some tin foil out, some aluminum foil and you're going to create seven aluminum foil balls. So pull out some aluminum foil. And uh, cut it into seven different pieces. Each piece should be about this big, about six inches. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I actually made eight pieces of tin foil. I only need seven, but I'll have one as a backup now. Now, take one of your pieces of string, put it right here in the middle of your tin foil, and tape it down. And then crumple your, ball, your uh, tin foil into a ball over the string. Like that. Okay, it should hold pretty tight. It's got the tape in there, and it's crumpled around the string. So you want to do this with every piece of string and every piece of tin foil. Now you have seven pieces of foil attached to the strings, and these are going to be your stars. Okay, now you're going to need to reference that chart that says uh, the star is light years away from Earth. We're going to start with Alkion. You're just going to take the end of your string and put it through the hole here. Okay. And pull it tight up against there. Now look back at your chart. Alkion is 210 light years away from Earth. And that's gonna be represented in inches by 7.3 inches. So get your ruler, pull it out, 
and measure 7.3 inches of string. Can you see that? The ruler starts right here at the hole and the star ends at 7.3 inches on the ruler. That's exactly where I want it. And I'm pulling the string tight so I know that I can trust my measurement. Now keep it exactly right here and then go to the back of your cardboard and tape it in place so it does not move. I better put two pieces just in case. Cool, so I've tape it, taped it here and I have so much extra string in the back that I don't need anymore. I'm just gonna cut that off. I don't need it. Keep following this chart and make sure that your string is the exact number of inches that it says in the string length on the right. When you get to the ones that say zero inches, just pull the tin foil as tight as you can against the paper so that there's no string hanging off. Okay, we've done it. We've made our model of the Big Dipper. And if you turn it like this, you can hang it and see, even like maybe looking up from your bed upwards, you can see how the Big Dipper looks. You can see the names of the stars and approximately how far they are from Earth in light years based off the inches of your string. If you wanna hang it up, you can poke holes in the corners here, put some string to it and hang it somewhere high so it can actually hang down and be a real mobile.